Hello, my name is Karen Lobel Fried, and I'm here at my home in Volcano, Hawaii, and I'd like to share with you my new book called Manu, the Boy Who Loved Birds. This book is very special to me. I hope you enjoy it. Manu squinted up at the sunny sky. A breeze tickled his cheek. He heard noisy clapping wings and watched a dove as she landed on a telephone wire. Puffing out her pretty spotted neck and tawny chest, she sang, Hoo, 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 hoo. Manu laughed. He loved birds. Manu means bird in Hawaiian. A long time ago, Manu's father told him that his full name, Manu O'o Mauloa, means may the O'o bird live on. His dad also said that O'o birds were extinct, gone forever. That didn't make any sense. Manu asked, why did you name me after a bird that's extinct? And if it's extinct, how can it still live on? His dad said, Manu, Names can have many meanings. Someday you will know what your name means to you. Manu's class was learning about native Hawaiian forest birds. On a school trip to the Bishop Museum, he inspected the splendid feathered capes and headdresses, woven in bold yellow, red, and black stripes and zigzags. Manu imagined himself as a powerful ali'i, a high chief standing tall and strong in his feathered cloak and helmet, his ahu'ula and mahiole. His people looked up at him with respect, waiting for a signal. Manu frowned. He looked out over the gray lava field, enemies in the distance, fast approaching. He lifted his chin, ready for battle. Suddenly, his friend Kimo interrupted Manu's imaginings. Eh, hey, Manu o'o, come see this skirt. It's made with a million o'o feathers. No wonder you don't have any yellow feathers left. Everyone laughed. Manu looked at the long feathered skirt. It was amazing. He was proud of his culture, but for the first time he wondered, where did all the o'o birds go? That night, Manu told his father he wanted to know more about o'o birds. Together, they searched the internet and discovered many extraordinary things. O'o birds were endemic honey eaters found in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. O'o birds flew in big flocks from the sea up to the mountaintops, going wherever the flowers bloomed. They had tongues shaped like straws with a brush at the end for sucking nectar from the flowers and they pollinated the flowers as they ate the nectar. O'o birds were tough and feisty and often chased smaller birds away from nectar-filled flowers. O'o birds used to live close to where Manu's family lived now. There was once a native forest where now there were only buildings and roads and lots of people. Manu looked carefully at old paintings of O'o birds from the different Hawaiian islands. There were four kinds of o'o. Most had soft, glossy black plumage. The Hawaii o'o and Bishop's o'o from Maui and Molokai had fluffy yellow feathers peeking out from under each wing. The o'o from Kauai had yellow feathers at the tops of their legs, like a little pair of shorts. But the o'ahu o'o, the bird from his island, had yellow feathers along the sides of their bodies and black and white striped tail feathers. Manu thought his o'o bird was the most beautiful of them all. Manu and his dad found a library of bird songs from all over the world. In between the chirps of crickets and the whistles and tweets of other birds, Manu heard a strange song. It sounded like flutes echoed from outer space. Manu suddenly realized this was the song of the O'o. That night, Manu had a dream about an O'o bird. 
with black feathers gleaming in the dim forest, all, all sang in a loud, clear voice. Then he cocked his head, listening. He heard his song repeated in the distance. All, all answered, and then the two birds sang a duet, back and forth. All, all flew closer to the song. He hopped quickly from branch to branch and dashed to the end of a reaching limb. Crouching low, he cocked his head to listen. Suddenly, he couldn't move his feet. He was stuck to the branch. Oh, oh tried desperately to escape. A human hand appeared and pulled Oo oh, oh, from the branch, holding him firmly. Oo oh, oh, was terrified. Fingers plucked yellow feathers from the sides of his body, then wiped the glue from his feet. The hand opened, and Oo oh, oh, flew wildly up and up as fast as he could, tearing through tangled leaves and branches. Manu woke suddenly. His heart was racing. His dream seemed so real. Manu thought about the o'o bird. He wished the feathers of all the beautiful forest birds had been drab and plain. The next day, Manu's teacher told his class to try and imagine what the history of Hawaii might have been like from an o'o bird's perspective. Millions of years ago, a black bird from a faraway land was migrating with a group of her relatives. They got caught in a terrible storm, and strong winds carried them far out to sea, far from their usual route. After days and miles of flying through gusts and raging wind, the air finally calmed. They saw a dark shape on the horizon and flew to a strange land of lava. She and her flock hungrily ate nectar and flowers from a few small trees. They plucked tiny insects from the leaves, branches, and under the bark. Exhausted, they settled in the tree for the night. She slept for the first time in her new homeland. Others had already discovered this remote island chain. Seabirds nested and raised their young here in safety, far from animals that could harm them. Shorebirds and waterfowl had also arrived. Seeds came with birds, some stuck on their feathers and feet, and some from fruit in their bellies. Insects also traveled here by wind and ocean currents, and some floated across the ocean on debris. One by one, over thousands of years, birds, insects, seeds, snails, and bats arrived here. Birds pollinated the plants as they ate the nectar and flowers, and helped spread seeds when they ate the fruit. Over time, huge forests grew across the land. The O'o and all the other pioneers became ancestors to the endemic species of Hawaii. They adapted and changed over time and depended on each other for survival. And then, about a thousand years ago, humans from Polynesia voyaged by canoe and settled here. Over time, they were joined by people from other parts of the world. Humans brought plants and animals that were useful to their way of life, like chickens, cows, sheep, goats, pigs, cats, and dogs. They also carried stowaways to these islands like rats, mice, and mosquitoes. Forests were cleared for crops. Endemic plants were crowded out by newly introduced plants, and native saplings were trampled and eaten. Introduced animals ate Hawaii's native birds, their eggs, and their young, and birds were bitten by mosquitoes and infected with deadly diseases. And now many of our endemic Hawaiian plants and animals are gone. All the rest of the day, Manu thought about the o'o and other native Hawaiian birds. That night, he dreamed he was an o'o bird. Manu gripped a branch with his clawed feet and stretched out his sleek, dark wings. He shook and fluffed out all his plumage. It felt good. He crouched, splayed his tail feathers, and flashed the bright yellow feathers beneath his wings. Manu realized another o'o was perched right next to him, watching him with bright black eyes. 
The O'O leaped into the air, his long striped tail feathers flapping behind him. Suddenly, without even thinking, Manu jumped into the air. He was flying! He grabbed the wind with fast wing beats and quickly caught up to his friend. They banked around lush fern trees, spiraling playfully over the mossy forest floor. Manu felt like he was the pilot and the plane, doing crazy tricks. They zipped through the sweet, damp air, taking turns chasing each other. Olapa trees, like hula dancers, waved their leaves gracefully as Manu and the O'O bird flew by. Manu quickly plucked and swallowed an olapa berry, then caught up to his friend to help chase smaller birds away from lehua blossoms. They slurped up the sweet nectar. Manu thought it tasted like liquid candy. The two birds flew up to the open sky, sailing in graceful arcs over the treetops. As they traveled, the forest started to grow thin. Manu felt hungry. They searched for flowers, but there were few. They flew and flew up the mountain. Suddenly, Manu noticed he was flying alone. Where did his friend go? Manu looked everywhere. He frantically searched the sky, then the treetops, screaming, Oh, 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 Manu, oh, oh. Manu opened his eyes. His mother held him. He scanned his bedroom, searching wildly for the oh, oh bird. Manu, it's okay. You were dreaming. Manu blinked. He was quiet, remembering. Then he said, I dreamed that all the forests were gone and there was no food for the forest birds. Mom, are there still forests in Hawaii for the native birds? Will I ever get to see a Hawaiian forest bird? Manu's mother touched his cheek gently. Yes, Manu, your dad and I have a surprise for your birthday. We are going to the island of Hawaii to visit our big island, Ohana. There, we will go to the native forest and see the birds. Manu hugged his mother tightly. He thought secretly, and there I will find the O'O bird. Then I'll learn the meaning of my name. The day finally came. Uncle picked up Manu and his parents at the Hilo airport. The family arrived to a luau. Cousins and friends sang and played ukulele and guitars. Tutu danced a hula called Manu O'O in honor of Manu's birthday. Manu ate his favorite foods, pork lao lao and haupia for dessert. But all through the party, Manu kept thinking about the next day when he would finally see the native birds. In the morning, Manu and his family went to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. At the visitor center, they explored displays of the park's forest plants and birds. Manu pressed buttons to hear the songs and calls of these birds. He listened over and over again, memorizing their sounds. Out on the trail, the air felt cool and misty. The forest smelled sweet. Through the leaves, they could see Kilauea volcano puffing steamy clouds into the sky. Manu was excited and looked at everything around him. But he had learned from his parents to be quiet and still to look and listen. Manu heard whirring wings and whispered, Apapane. Their bubbly song filled the forest. He could see them through his dad's binoculars, their red bodies and white vent feathers easy to identify. Manu watched one Apapane land right above them and plunge his beak into a bright red lehua blossom. Manu whispered, Oma'o. He recognized their song, which sounded just like their name. But Manu couldn't find the Oma'o through the binoculars. His father said quietly, The Oma'o are very shy, but we know they are near when we hear their song. Then they saw an eo, a Hawaiian hawk, gliding in big circles in the sky. Its calls pierced the air. That afternoon, Manu and his parents visited a special conservation center where endangered Hawaiian forest birds were being raised. 
Someday these rare birds would be released back into the wild. Manu learned about the plants and insects these birds depended on for food. To survive in the wild, they would have to find food on their own. Manu saw big Hawaiian crows, alala, la, in a room with screened windows that was filled with trees. They hopped heavily from branch to branch. One made funny muttering sounds and watched another who pecked at a hole in a tree trunk. Manu walked down a dark hallway where windows revealed rooms that looked like little forests. These environments had been created for the endangered birds so they could grow in safety. Manu watched the Akikiki, then the Kivikiu. He paused and smiled at the Palila with their bright yellow heads zipping from branches to food bowls, so funny and cute. One Palila seemed to look right at Manu. Squinting his eyes, Manu imagined the walls disappearing and the Palila flying free. Manu felt so happy to be surrounded by Hawaiian birds and plants. But then he realized he hadn't seen any o'o the whole day. Were the o'o really gone? It was their last morning on Hawaii Island. Manu's family drove up the slope of Mauna Kea. The mountain wore a little white cap of snow on top. They were going as volunteers to plant koa trees inside a large area that was surrounded by a tall fence. Their project leader explained, when we protect an area from predators, remove invasive weeds and restore the native and endemic plants, the Hawaiian plants will grow and thrive. Then the native birds and insects will come. The birds always tell us about our forests. When lots of different birds are living in a forest, we know that forest is healthy. The earth felt cool and damp in Manu's hands. In the distance, he saw a giant old koa tree. Manu looked down at the reaching roots of the tiny sapling he held gently between his fingers. Manu spoke quietly. Hey, Keiki, little koa baby, someday you'll grow big too. That night, in his own bed, Manu drifted off to sleep. He dreamed he was in a very old forest. The koa and ohia trees grew so close together, Manu could barely see the sky. The air felt fresh and cool. Manu heard a familiar song and looked up. There was O'o, perched on a branch, watching Manu. O'o cocked his head and flicked his tail feathers. Manu smiled at his friend. Suddenly, a big flock of O'o birds flew overhead, calling, Oh, oh! Manu was amazed to see so many O'o birds. The birds flew low and their wings made a buzzing sound. His friend looked up at the other O'o birds and then at Manu again. Then, O'o leaped off the branch and flew up to join his flock. Manu watched as all the O'o birds flew together. They called, oh, oh, as they made smooth waves over the tops of the trees. Their black feathers glistened in the sunshine as they flew into the distance. And then they were gone. Manu opened his eyes. Bright sunshine filled his bedroom with light. Manu thought about his dream. He said quietly, oh, oh, I will never forget you. At breakfast, Manu told his father and mother about his dream. He said, I realize now the O'o birds are really gone. He sighed. It makes me so sad. But then Manu brightened. I also know there are other native forest birds still here and they need our help. They need the forest to survive. Excited. Manu said, I can plant native trees and I can get my friends to help too. His parents smiled and nodded. Then Manu was quiet. He thought about his Hawaiian name and its English translation. 
Manu o'o maloa, may the o'o bird live on. Manu thought about o'o, the bird in his dreams. He remembered dream flying with o'o through the forest. Manu closed his eyes and felt himself soaring through the air, the wind rushing through his black feathered wings. Manu opened his eyes. He started to smile. He looked at his mom and dad. I just realized, even though the o'o birds are gone, they will always live on in me, in my dreams and in my name. And that was when Manu finally understood the meaning of his name. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this story.